have a word from God that is in my heart. This month is the month of sacrifice. Tell you about month of sacrifice. Month of sacrifice. Month to sow by sacrifice. The theme is our month to sow by sacrifice. It's from Romans 12, 1. The Bible says, therefore, if you please put it up in NIV. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. Somebody say, offer your bodies. Offer your As what? As a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. The Bible says this is your what? True and proper worship. Present your bodies. God is more interested in your body, your life, before your gift as a living sacrifice. And in what way it should be what? holy and pleasing unto God, which is your true and proper worship. In this month, you will make some sacrifices you have never made before for God. You are going to be like John the Baptist in John 3.30 that said he must increase and I decrease. Understanding that your worth, your net worth is as a result of Christ in you. In this month, you would make sacrifices. You would give up something. You will surrender something for God in order to go higher. Any athlete that wants to win the race will not eat like somebody that doesn't have a race to run. They starve themselves. They beat their body. They put their body and their pleasure under subjection. You must sacrifice pleasure for treasure. You would have to sacrifice time. Sometimes you may need to wake up early in the morning. If you've not been doing morning devotion with your children and your family, you may now have to do that in this month. Seriously. You have to make space for God in your schedule. Beyond what you've been doing. You may have to move your wife and your family in a proper direction more towards God than ever before. This is not, this is what we want to do. No. It's about what God wants us to do. You may need to sacrifice sleep. You may need to sacrifice pleasure. You may need to sacrifice ego. You may need to sacrifice your will. Yes, no more my will. Even Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. In order to attain a better and a higher standing with Christ for greater glory. On that altar where men soar, they must be a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Look at what Paul said. Philippians 3 and verse 8. He said, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. This month, you will read your Bible like you've never read before. You will shut TV. You may need to sacrifice your favorite shows in order to have time for the Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things and I consider them what? Garbage. You may need to put your phone aside. That phone is distracting you. It can stop your destiny. You can't reply every email. It's not every you reply. There's a time for everything. Somebody hearing me? You may need to put your phone aside to be able to communicate with your wife and your children. So that their destiny does not go bad. I consider them garbage. The reason is that I may gain Christ. This month, my prayer is that better shall gain Christ. Amen. There will be a corporate fast September 10th to 16th. It's called the altar of grace. This corporate fast is called the altar of grace. We'll be fasting and praying for the last quarter of 2018. You want to tap into grace so that the people that are waiting for 2019, you would already be enjoying 2019 blessings yeah. before you enter 2019. Yeah. How does that sound for you? Yeah. You didn't hear me. Yeah. What people are waiting to enjoy in 2019, may you be enjoying it for September 2018. Yeah. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. God said anybody that will be faithful 
in this season of fasting and prayer, they will not experience this grace. I pray for you that as you are faithful to God, that the Lord will bless you. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans 12 and verse 11. I will be speaking shortly on the zeal for the Lord. Look at that sacrifice, zeal for the Lord. Romans 12, verse 11 and 12. I want you to read it loud like you truly believe the word of God. How many of you believe the word of God? Yeah. All right. Are you ready to read? NIV, one, two, go. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer everybody rise up to your feet let's read it read it loud let your neighbor not be able to speak louder than you the more you shout the more blessings you receive are you ready to read want to go never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the lord be joyful in hope patient in affliction faithful in prayer Lift your right hand up. Lord, bless your word in our lives. Release power to your word. May we not go back the same way we came. Within this short time, speak to us a truth that we will never be able to recover from. And let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear the loudest amen today. Amen. Clap your hands and give God praise. I'll be speaking on what I titled zeal for the Lord. Tell you about zeal for the Lord. The scripture says here, if you look in this same Romans 12, where we're talking about presenting your life as a living sacrifice, the scripture says, never be lacking in zeal. One of the signs that you are a living being is you have zeal. You are active. If you show me someone who is in the morgue, one of the evidences that they are dead and gone is because they can't respond. Anybody agree with me? Amen. If the devil wants to take you out and make you irrelevant, he will seize your zeal. Be careful if as a believer you begin to see that you have lost your passion. For the things of God. It's a sign of spiritual death. That's why the Bible says, never be lacking. Tell you about never be lacking. Never be lacking. In, zeal. In zeal. Yes. God will never give a great work to a person without zeal. When you talk to employers, one of the People you are looking to power your work and your office and your job is someone with zeal. Have you ever got into some offices where people are full of passion for their work? In customer, have you ever put someone in customer service and say, Hi, hi? What do you want? Have you ever gone to some stores? There's a specific store. Friend at that store. Welcome to Best Buy. <laughs> and they keep going. Or you go to a certain store. I don't I'm, I'm not bad mounting some stores, but some specific stores. Nobody to help you. They have more supervisors than cashiers. <laughs> You are looking for something. It's over there. Where is the restroom? It's closed. Will you go to that store? No. Okay. Employers are always looking for people that are passionate to man their front desk. Everybody agree with me? Nobody wants to hire a person that is lethargic because you will kill the work. There is a kingdom that God has placed in our hands. And Jesus told us before he left. He said, greater works than I have done, you shall do. You are not hearing what I'm saying. 
he did, how many of you believe that Jesus did great works? Oh, he did great works. He healed the sick. And he told you, I give you permission to do greater than I've done. You can blow my record away. That's what Jesus said. And you think he's going to give it to somebody that is lethargic, druggy, not ready. These 10 cups of coffee. Oh no, he ain't going to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. The amount of zeal you have for God will determine the amount of grace he gives to you. So when God said, never be lacking in zeal, you must understand that is your container for covenant grace. Go and look at anybody God has committed a great work into their hand. One of the fundamental things God is looking for is a man of zeal. If you have no passion, he doesn't give you anything. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. And Satan likes to target the zeal of believers. I'll show you three ways that the Satan targets zeal. Number one, he targets your zeal through sin. That's why you discover that when people sin, all of a sudden they are fire. So when Satan wants to shoot a star down, one of the first ways he does that is through sin. I prove the scripture to you. Turn your Bibles with me to Psalm number 51. Read from verse 10. Psalm 51. David was a mighty man. David never ran from anybody. Not even Goliath. But the day David, one day, the Bible says when kings went to battle, David was upon the rooftop. His zeal for battle was gone. That was where he made the worst mistake of his life. Men that lack zeal make colossal mistakes. Put it. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew what? That steadfast spirit is a sustaining spirit within me. Keep going. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit away from me. Verse 11, verse 12. What, what did he say now? Joy of my son. And what was the next thing? A willing spirit that will do what? It is that spirit that sustains you going when other people are out. So that spirit is the spirit that puts a zeal inside of you. That's why you call that you get filled with the Holy Ghost. It's like some power, some horsepower came inside of you. You wonder, you are tired, you are almost out. But when it comes to prayer, your energy comes back. That is the zeal of the Lord. Somebody has to shout amen, receive fresh fire into your boat. Don't say amen like your neighbor. I said as you shout amen, receive fresh fire into your boat. When God is wanting to raise a new champion, one of the first indicators of the people he will select are men of zeal. The second way the enemy will target your zeal is through trials and tribulation. He will throw the kitchen sink to you. He will do everything. That's what happened to Job. Job lost his entire family in one day. Job was a billionaire. Lost his entire company one day. Job, he said, I know my redeemer live it. Hey, and I will see him on that day. Everything the devil tried to throw at Job, Job was still standing. Even his wife told him, curse God and die. Job said, we will receive good things from him and also not receive evil from him. He said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Anytime you are able to overcome what the devil throws to you, your faith is renewed. Your zeal is renewed. What the scripture say later, the Bible and the latter end of Job's life was greater than the beginning. Somebody, I see greater things happening to you this year. I said, I see mightier things happening to you this year. If you believe it, let me hear your amen like thunder. Sit down. The third group of where the devil targets your zeal is to bring discouragers. Other people that have lost their zeal tell you, you are, you are doing too much, oh. Is it only you that is here? You are carrying church for head though. You want to carry the word? The word is heavier. Jesus said, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Don't carry the word. 
Have you not heard this song, take the whole world? And give me Jesus. If you follow the devil, the devil is a bad devil. Yeah. You are not hearing me. The devil is not your friend. He will never be your friend. He doesn't like you. He will not choose you above the demons. And if you enter trouble with God, the devil will not save you. You are not hearing me. You know what is going on in the Christian dome now is many people have lost the zest and the fire that God gave to them from the very first time. You know, in the anointing, there are five components. One of them is cinnamon that represents the zest of the spirit. Even Jesus was a man of zeal. He says, zeal for my father's house has consumed me. Zeal for my father's house has consumed me. So, some people... They are wanting to climb up to destiny. Eh? Come. I need two people. Real quick. Two people. Come. I cover you in the blood of Job. Please clap for them. Stay here. Stand behind each other. Stand behind each other. No. Face me. Face me. Pastor Obina, please stand behind him. This description I'm giving to you was given in this last panel by Reverend Dr. Charles Oswiki. After he finished, I almost lost my mind. But I want to be able to put a picture for you to help you understand how the devil can use some people that you look at as so spiritual, but they are old prophets. God has rejected them. The old prophet is coming from the mountain of encountering God. Rather than stay there, the old prophet is coming down. You climb up, come to the next step. And they meet this young person that is on fire. They say, where are you going? You say, oh, I'm going to the mountain. I'm going to go and counter God. They say, oh, there's nothing there. There's no, 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 no. We've been there, we've done that. Go back. When you get there, it will take time from your family. It will take you, I know, I mean, problems. Church members will bother you. Why bother? You don't need to meet God in the mountain. Climb up again. Say, no, no, no. Why are you going there? Look at me. Just follow me. Wow. Why are you serving God? You are following this small young boy. He's telling you God will do this. That's how people promise other people. Don't need. Forget what God has for you. But God had told you, I will raise you up. You will change the world. So the young prophet turns back and says, okay, don't worry, let us go. And they stop climbing from the ladder of destiny. And they waste away. That will never be your portion. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. You will get there. Sit down. You need to run away from people that try to tell you bad things about God and church. They are zeal destroyers. Some people will engage you with the politics of church. Excuse me, we don't come here because of man. I have never made up my mind to come to church because of man. The day you don't come, I will come. I will start opening prayer. Because it is not because of you. I am alive today because of God. Stop making man your focus. Oh my God. The second young man coming. No, don't go. Keep, come, come on. Hey, don't go. You have to block your ears. You went up. You saw what is there. I have not been up. Don't tell me to stop. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Keep climbing. Oh, no, no. I've been there, done that. People will discourage you. Remember what happened to this other pastor. Follow me. Let us just stay here and have discussion. No. Let me go there by myself. Let me encounter God. Let me see God for myself. I'm looking for some people that will not let anybody discourage them. Will not let anybody stop them from encountering God. There is a generation that is hoping and trusting God that there is a word that God will give to you that will change their life. The expectation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I pray for you today that nobody will discourage you. Nobody will intimidate you. Nobody will distract you. As you shall ever receive your fire back. Sit down. Be careful. Because the devil 
We want to show you many ways to steal your Z. If he does that, he has, you have lost your way to significance and relevance. Lift your right hand up. Say, Lord, Lord. preserve my zeal for you. Shout it loud again. Somebody say, Lord, Lord. preserve my zeal for you. I would say, never be lacking in zeal. Keep your spiritual favor. Stay hot. Let me tell you, you cannot offer a sacrifice if there is no fire. Your zeal is your fire. The zeal of the Lord inside of you is that fire that will cause your sacrifice to go up. That's what made the difference between Abel and Cain. Cain was lethargic. Cain had no zeal. So when he offered the sacrifice, he just offered something that, let's just do this thing. Be careful of that mindset, let's just do and go. When you start seeing that, know that the devil is targeting your zeal. Because then you will no more pay attention to what is right before God. Let me just go there and just do. Let me just do and go. The presence of God is not the place of do and go. How can you come to the presence of God and nothing enters you? Nothing happens to you. That will never be your portion. Amen. You didn't hear? I said that will never be your portion. Amen. Yes, be careful. But never be lacking in zeal. I like the way King James Version said it. He said, no slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Serve God like your life depends on it. I pray for you this morning. The Lord will give you grace to serve him. Look, whether in ministry, whether in family, whether in academia, business, government, leadership, politics, or otherwise, God is looking to raise champions. New people that would pilot the frontiers of his purpose, kingdom purpose. And God is looking to raise those people in Bethel. But you must be a man of zeal. You must be a man that has a passion for God. Your, your passion must be unquenchable. What is this zeal that I'm talking about? How many of you want to know what this zeal means? Zeal means unquenchable passion. Unquenchable commitment. Unquenchable desire towards making sure that the kingdom of God is manifested. That's what the zeal for the Lord means. Unquenchable passion. Unquenchable enthusiasm unquenchable commitment, extreme dedication to a godly cause and the incarnation of God so that the authority of God is established on earth. That is to say, when Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that is your heart desire. Anywhere you are, the will of God must be done. And you have a passion to make sure that comes to pass. God wants you to preserve that. And that's why he gave us the Holy Spirit so that that thing can continue in the right direction. I pray for you this morning that that zeal of the Lord will be manifest upon your life in Jesus' name. That zeal will reinforce your prayer life. That zeal will reinforce the way you pay attention to detail. That zeal will help you to advance the glory of God on earth. That zeal, it will cost you. It's not, it's not going to be easy. It's going to make you do things that nobody has done before. But at the end of all things, God will be glorified. And you would have a better standing with God. Tap your neighbor, tap your neighbor. In the name of Jesus, I will not lose my zeal. Say it again. Tell them in the name of Jesus, I will not lose my zeal. Yes, God wants us to be people of zeal. Even our own Jesus was a man of zeal. Yes, he says, zeal for my father's house has consumed me. He beat people in the temple that were selling things in the temple. You've never heard that Jesus beat anybody, but he took a stick and whooped some people. He was zealed. I mean, and he said it. He said, because you have made my father's house a den of lions instead of a house of prayer. Because people mistook what the temple was. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? The house of God must mean something to you. The kingdom of God must mean something to you. And that must be the instigator for your zeal. That must be, that's where you must, you must channel your zeal to advance the kingdom of God. I'm not just talking about zeal, just full of zeal, just run. No, no, no. I'm, not talking, about, I'm talking about making sure that the kingdom of God comes to pass. If something is out of place in the kingdom, you make it sure, make sure that it's right. One of the days I, the place of my assignment as assistant pastor before, how did I get there? I came into the church. I saw three people sing, two people singing. Two of them were singing. There was no harmony in the singing. And God told me, you are the man to fix that thing. So, by telling me that automatically, what does that mean? You are a choir member. So, with that zeal, I ran into the choir. From there, choir that was three. I met it as three. I left it as 30. Oh, 
Oh, yes. And that was where God used to raise me. What I'm trying to make you understand is when God wants to introduce you to significance, it is your zeal that will pave the way. Amen. Did you hear what I'm saying? Amen. But if you lose your zeal, you have lost your point of relevance. You are not hearing what I'm saying. On the job, look at people that they, the people that they first give raise and the people that they will never fire are people that have passion. Once you have passion, they look at you as a driving force for that for that office. But if you just come in, how is everything? I'm just fine. We're here. We're here today. What's going on? You know, one day at a time. When they start to fire people, they will start with you. But when you are zealous, when you are passionate, in fact, if they think of people to fire, instead of them to fire, they say, you know what? This one is different. May your case be different. You, I didn't hear. I said, may your case be different. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6, the scripture was said, unto us a child is born. And the service said, for the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice. And for his now look at how the scripture ends it in Isaiah 6 verse 7. He said, and the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So even for the kingdom to be established for Jesus, it takes the zeal of God. May God give you zeal. I can't hear someone say, may God give you zeal. Shout a big amen one more time. Yes, the Bible tells us in Titus chapter 2, that God, verse 14, who gave himself for all that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself, a people that are peculiar, zealous for good works. God wants us to be people that are zealous for good works. That whatever we do, we show passion. You are an usher, you show passion. You are giving, you show passion. Don't just give to God and say, okay, well, just give. They say, it's time to give, oh, let's just give. No, this is where you carry it with passion. God has given me an opportunity to give. I'm going to give God. Amen. See, that's the way God looks at it. Do you know when you're preparing the food? What made the angel eat the food of Abraham is not just because Abraham was a good cook. But see the way he was running. He said, God, here is the food. Even if God did not want to eat the food, God will say, let me taste what man's food look like. Your Z will produce your Isaac. Amen. Somebody, you are not hearing me. I said, your Z will produce your Isaac. As you show passion for the kingdom of God, may the Lord produce your Isaac for you. Shout a big amen. I'm going to wrap this up by telling you about the story of a man called Caleb. Caleb, at the age of 40, God gave him a promise. Are you ready for this? God, Joshua chapter 14. We'll continue in second service. We are share another story with you. And I'll tell you about some people that were zealous and how God shot them into limelight. Because if you are going to be a person of sacrifice, sacrifice is not just sacrifice. Let me just sacrifice. if you don't have zeal, you can't sacrifice. No zeal, you can't. No, you, you can't. You can't. Caleb, at the age of forty, look at verse ten, Joshua fourteen from verse ten. He said, "Now then, just as the Lord had promised, He kept me alive for forty-five years since the time He said this to Moses. So he was forty. Forty-five years after." Why Israel moved about in the wilderness? So I am here today, 85 years old. Are you seeing that? So at 85, hear his statement. He said, I am still as strong today as Moses sent me out. Remember when they sent 12? 10 people came back with bad news. Two people came enthusiastically. Say we can take that land. Yeah. What is that thing before you? What is that thing your family has not accomplished? Do you know you are the man to accomplish it? What is that thing that has never happened in your family? Do you know that there's an anointing upon your life to make it happen? Do you know that God wants to raise you to wipe away shame? As you shout, amen, receive the power. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. There's something, there's an embarrassment that has been going on in your family. There's somebody that has been assaulting your home. Things that have been happening. A joy that has not come to your house. As you have seen for the Lord. This year, the Lord will make it happen for you. You are not hearing me. 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 Are not hearing me. <laughs> Hear this. He said, Moses said, he said, I am as vigorous to go out to battle 
now as I was there. You need to let your zeal put vigor. Nobody has become a college graduate in your family and somebody is telling you you cannot graduate. It is not possible. Somebody is telling you, just like somebody told me, told me, ah, oh, we're going to kick you out. I said, kick who out? <laughs> kick who what? When God has given me admission, you will live before me. Yeah. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. They told you that this course is too hard. In the name of Jesus, because it is too hard, I will make a elite. Yeah. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. Today, I prophesy upon your life. Today, that this is impossible for you. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace to excel in it. I say, receive the grace to excel in it. I say, receive the grace to excel in it. That mountain, you shall take that mountain. I say, you shall take that mountain. I say, you shall take that mountain. Receive your zeal back. Receive your fire back. I say, receive your zeal back. Receive your fire back. Receive your zest back. Receive your passion back. Let me hear your amen like part of the body. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. Verse 12. He said, now give me this hill country. Give me this mountain. That the Lord promised me that day. Even told Caleb, told Joshua. He said, you yourself heard it. Then that the Anakites were there. Giants were there. Giants. Listen to me. There are giants before you. But it's zeal that made David with stone to kill Goliath. Don't focus on your weapon. Your zeal is a weapon. Hey, ho, ho, shatter. You are not hearing me. Stop focusing on your bank account. Your zeal will get you there. Listen to me. If there's nobody that is a millionaire in your family, this year God will raise you as one. Well. You are not hearing me. I see somebody breaking records oh Lord. you will break records you will break lift your hands in the name of Jesus I will break records I said I will break records I'm taking that mountain I am taking that mountain come on I'm taking that mountain what nobody has done for the Lord I will do for the Lord what nobody has done for the kingdom I will do for the Lord what nobody has accomplished in my family I will accomplish for the Lord I said I shall accomplish for the Lord Anybody that is ready, anybody that Allah, the Helebaba, Rakete, Kete, open your mouth, say, Lord, in the name, I take that mountain. What is that mountain before your family? In the name of Jesus, I need some prayer warriors on this altar. Receive your zeal back, receive your fire back, receive your zeal back, receive your fire back, receive your zeal back, receive your fire back, receive your zeal back, receive that fire. Let me tell you, God wants to raise. Look here, look here. God wants to raise champions for his kingdom. Through you, the kingdom of God will be established. Am I speaking to somebody today? Tell your neighbor through me. You are, you are not, tell your neighbor through me. The kingdom of God will be established. You have a gift. God has given you a gift. Amen. You chose the power. Amen. Let me show you something. I'm not close. Pull up the scripture. Stay on that scripture. There were giants there, the Anakites. They were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me. The Lord will help you. Amen. Look, look, look. It is a it is a we. Is believe the scripture. Everybody read it, shout it. In the name of Jesus, you will do things that nobody has done for the kingdom. Don't shout like that. I said, In the name of Jesus, you will do things nobody has done for the kingdom. Receive the power now in the name of Jesus. Go to verse 13. I will show you something. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh. And gave him little, gave him Hebron. You know what Hebron is? You know what Hebron is? Hebron is the mountain of the Lord. That was where they anointed David as king. 
your portion shall be royalty. I see God raising somebody here. The Lord will raise you for his glory. I said the Lord will raise you for his glory. I said the Lord will raise you for his glory. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, Father, raise me, raise me, raise me for your glory. Raise me, raise me. Fill me with power. Fill me with zeal. Fill me with fire. Fill me with unction. Rikale panana makita li baba ba. Shande kele baba ba ba ba. Rate kesiata. Ele di malada di alaba se te keli ba. Fill me with fire. Fill me with fire. Fill me with zeal for the advancement of your kingdom. The work of God will not die in my time. I arise as a Caleb. I arise as a Caleb. Hit me this mountain. I arise. I arise. I arise. I arise. I arise. Lift your hands above your head. Father, tonight I ask upon the life of every man that is here. Fill us with a fresh zeal. Let nothing, let no sin let no trial, let no discouragement or discourage us steal our zest. Today, renew the fire upon everybody. We go forward, we take that mountain for Jesus. And through us, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Every person whose fire is gone, as you shout, Amen, receive your fire back ten times. And may the name of the Lord be glorified. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands if you know you got your fire back. Tell them I got my fire back. I got it. Tell them I got my fire back. Look. Tell them I got my fire back. I got my fire back. I said I got my fire back. Receive it. I got my fire back. Mountains will move for me. I said I got my fire back. Mountains will move for me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me hear your amen like thunder. I'll meet you in the second service. In the second service, I will show, I will show you in the world that there's something God wants to do through you. And that you are God's hope for a new beginning. Some of you, you don't know that there are many generals that God is retiring. I'll count five people and I ask you who have replaced them. Are you ready? Yes. Amy McPherson. Yes. Hey. Katrin Kuma. Yes. Kenneth Hagin. Yes. Billy Graham. Yes. Aura Roberts. Yes. Mal Morrow. Yes. All of you from Caribbean. Yes. Yes. Eh? You know how old. Uh, uh, what is wrong this lady that's a grandmother that, that teaches the word of God? Do you all know? What's Mary Not Mary Hickey. Mary Hickey. No? Joyce Meyer. Who, 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 who has taken over the teaching ministry? Maurice Serulo. These people are going. Many of you from Nigeria. Archbishop Benson in the house. Eh? Pastor E. Adeboy has been there. For a long time. They're almost 80. And there's a generation that lacks zeal. All of them, it was zeal at 30 that took them up. Yes. Don't let this generation waste. So the enemy knocked Swagger out and nobody could come out that could shake the world again with a musical and a preaching anointing. And we are sitting down with Holy Ghost fire. There's nothing wrong with the Holy Ghost. You got no zeal. Yes. T.L. Osborne. These are people that took India. God gave them cities, Wales, John G. Lake, A. A. Allen, that we pray for people. No bones. Bones come up. Life in service. You are not hearing me. A. A. Allen. No bones. You didn't hear me. No bones. You pray. Bones show up. Instantaneous creative miracle. That same God is still God again. Yeah. But no men of zeal that will enter the secret place. But can I tell you, God is raising them in better. Yeah. I came, I came with a holy fire. I said, God is raising them in better. If you shout amen, the fire of God will touch you. Come on. 
as you receive it, receive it, receive it. Which anointing do you want? Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it. 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 In the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Oh God, lift your hands and thank God. Thank God. My time is up. We meet in second service. Lord bless your people. You have blessed us today. We go with this confidence, knowing fully well that you spoke your word. Any giant that is asleep, any person that you have your hand upon that is asleep, that Satan stole their zeal, stole their fire. Today we wake them up in the name of Jesus. Let there be a fresh passion, a fresh fire. Bless your people mightily. In Jesus' name we pray. Do you receive the word of God today? Clap your hands and give a prayer. Thank you so much for watching this broadcast. We pray that this message ministered to your heart. If you are watching this message and you do not know Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just say this simple prayer with us. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned against you. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died and rose for my sins. I denounce and renounce any other God that I may have put before you. Jesus, save my life. If you said that simple prayer, we want to welcome you into the body of Christ. God is going to do some amazing things in your life. Join us at Bethel Covenant Assembly of God Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. at 6812 Bandera Road in San Antonio, Texas. And be sure to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube.